My dearly beloved in Christ, it is wonderful that we celebrate every year on the 1st of July a feast in honor of the precious blood of Jesus. For we could say that the precious blood of our Lord is the price of our salvation. It is the price of our redemption. Our Lord, shedding his precious blood, reopened the gates of heaven and redeemed us. We can go back in the Old Testament to read how the angel of death passed over the homes of the Israelites, which was the 10th plague. There were all of these plagues that God sent to Pharaoh and the Egyptians to force them to let the Israelites leave bondage in Egypt. And after the first plague, Pharaoh said he would let them go, and then he changed his mind, and he kept changing his mind. And finally came the 10th plague, which was that the firstborn in the families of all the Egyptians was slain. The angel of death passed over the land and killed the firstborn in every family as a punishment and to force them to let the Israelites go, which finally Pharaoh did. But Moses told the people, the Israelites, you are to take a lamb and to slay it and cook it, eat it, the Paschal meal, but take the blood from the lamb when you kill it and put that blood on your door, your doorpost, the lintel of your door, so that the angel of death, when he passes over the land, will recognize the homes of the Israelites and will not slay the firstborn of your families. Now, you might ask, well, the angel certainly knew which families were Israelites and which ones were Egyptians. So why was this required? Because it was a symbol of the precious blood of Jesus, a uh, foreshadowing. Just like the Paschal Lamb signified our Lord, the Lamb of God, so the blood from the Paschal Lamb, which preserved the homes of the Israelites from that terrible punishment, symbolized or foreshadowed the precious blood of Jesus, which earned for us the grace of redemption and of salvation. St. Paul, in his epistle to the Hebrews, which is read at this Mass, talks about how in the Old Testament, the tabernacle had an outer court where there was the sacrifices, and then there was the part that was called the holies. And inside the holies, only the priests would go in there, and there was the altar of incense and the table of showbreads, the candlestick, etc. But then there was a veil, and beyond that veil, there was an apartment, a section called the Holy of Holies. And in that section was kept the Ark of the Covenant. And it was so sacred, so revered, that only the high priest could go, and that once a year. And the high priest was told, the Mosaic law was, that he was not to dare to go into the Holy of Holies, once a year on the Day of Atonement without taking blood with him. And the blood would be from the sacrifices that were offered that day. And he would go in and he would sprinkle the altar and he would present this blood to Almighty God in atonement for the people's sins. This is what St. Paul says about that. Such then being the arrangements, the priests always used to enter into the first tabernacle to perform the sacred rites. But into the second tabernacle, the high priest alone entered once a year, not without blood, which he offered for his own and for the people's sins of ignorance. And of course, that blood again was only pleasing to God as atonement because it foreshadowed the perfect sacrifice of Jesus shedding his blood on the cross. Now we think about shedding of blood. The first time we read about it is the blood of Abel. And it says in Genesis that after Cain slew his 
brother Abel, the earth opened and swallowed up the blood. And then God spoke to Cain and he said, the blood of your brother cries to me from the earth. And then, of course, down through the centuries, we think of all the martyrs who have been put to death for their faith in Christ. And every time we have a mass of a martyr, we wear red vestments signifying that shedding of blood. And speaking of blood, is it not an amazing substance in our body? You think about how God has so wonderfully created the human body. We have all of the various organs, and each one has its function, and the entire organism functions together, but not without the blood circulating through the body, bringing nutrients and oxygen to every single cell throughout the body, penetrating into every area, bringing that nutrition and, and oxygen and the strength, the vitality, for the body to repair itself and to live. And I, I mentioned this kind of parenthetically. It's interesting, there is a religion, a cult, called Jehovah's Witnesses, who completely reject the idea of transfusion of blood. They won't have blood transfusions or obviously will not donate their blood. That's something I do, uh, make blood donations several times a year, is a way we can provide that for those in a serious accident or something to save lives. But it's interesting that this religion, for some reason, they think the blood is sacred and therefore they cannot have blood transfusions. At any rate, let us reflect upon our Lord, how he shed his blood as the price of our salvation for us, for our redemption. We begin in the agony in the garden where his sweat became his drops of blood. And then that terrible scourging where he was covered with wounds and the blood flowed, the crowning with thorns, how our Lord fell beneath the cross, but finally being nailed to the cross. But not only that, and not only did his precious blood flow from all of these wounds, but he even willed that the soldier would pierce his side with a lance. As we read in the gospel at Mass today from St. John, the soldiers came because the Jews had a custom. It was going to be beginning at sundown on Good Friday was the Passover feast, the most solemn feast of the year. And so the Jewish leaders went to Pilate and the Romans. They did not want the bodies hanging on the cross over the Passover feast. And so the soldiers came to the two thieves and because they were still alive, they broke their legs to hasten death so that the bodies could be taken down and buried. But they came to our Lord and recognized that he was already dead. And so a soldier took his lance and pierced our Lord's side. Now the wound would have been on the right side. He pierced our Lord's side with his lance and the lance went between two of the ribs and it went so far in that the point of the lance entered our Lord's heart. And the remaining blood in his heart flowed out that wound. And as St. John says in the Gospel, there came out blood and water. Now, this is very symbolic in many ways. But first of all, speaking of the precious blood, it shows us that our Lord wanted to prove his love for us to such a point that we, he would shed even those last few drops. And we have the five wounds of our Lord, which he retained after his resurrection, the wounds in his hands and feet, but also there is that wound in his side, which came even after his death. But this is what St. John Chrysostom says about that wound and the blood that flowed from the wound. The water and blood showed forth symbolically baptism and the sacraments. For from these, Holy Church was founded by the labor of regeneration and the renovation of the Holy Ghost. Through baptism, I say, and through the sacraments, which seem to have issued from his side. Therefore, from his side, Christ built the church, just as from Adam's side, Eve, his wife, was brought forth. For this reason, St. Paul also testifies, saying, 
we are members of his body and of his bones, meaning thereby, doubtless, his side. For as God caused the woman to be created from the side of Adam, so also Christ, from his own side, gave us water and blood, from which he formed his church. When God created Eve, he put Adam into a deep sleep. And then he took the rib from Adam's side and formed it into Eve. So likewise, Christ in the sleep of death from his side through the piercing of the lance came forth this blood and water symbolizing the sacraments, symbolizing that life of grace, the sanctifying grace that comes to us through the sacraments and through the church. So we reflect upon the precious blood of our Lord and let us give thanks to him for loving us to such a point that he would redeem us, that he would pay the ransom to save us from hell by shedding every last drop of his blood. May we love our Lord and may we be willing to perform the little sacrifices that God asks of us in the course of our daily duty, proving our love for him who shed his every last drop of blood for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.